835, Big 550 KTRS. David Stokes is with us. Show me policy analyst and all-around nice guy. He joins us every Monday. Good morning, David Stokes. Good morning, McGraw. Good morning, Kelly. Good morning. Uh, you are outraged over this uh, story in the newspaper by our friend Nick Pfister. Well, act actually, I think what the Metropolitan Taxi Cab Commission doing is is great in a way. And why it's great is because it's introducing to a new generation of, of young people the abuses of government power that are out there <laughs> in, a way that, in a way that they might not have seen or know or cared. I mean, this type of thing happens all the time where a, a state or local or national, I focus more on the state and local, right. a licensing board, a licensing agency is there and under the guise of protecting the public safety. And it's always under the guise of protecting public safety. But what they're really there for is to restrict competition and to protect the current the current operators who control the system, and they control the Metropolitan Taxi Cab. They, they are clearly controlling the status quo, and uh, you're right. And it's not a liberal or a conservative philosophy. It's just the people in power like to remain in power and like to have their profits protected and institutionalized, if you will. Right. It's called the economic concept behind it is called regulatory capture. It, simply put, it is you regulate an industry inevitably, sometimes very quickly, particularly when you, from the start, put the cab co current cab companies on the commission. The commission, the regulatory body, starts to act in, act in cohesion with the existing agent, with the existing companies. Right. And when technology or any other type of change comes, that body then tries to resist. And I think doing so, what they're doing here with Lyft or keeping Uber out, I think it's terrible. Okay, so let's go back for a second. Cause, cause so, so take us from the beginning. Um, Lyft is an app which basically is competition for taxi drivers because they're it's sort of a ride-a-friend service based through technology and through your phone. Right, and same as Uber. It's, it's instead of the old system of hailing and dispatching a cab, you just grab up your phone. And some, lo some local cab companies have these apps, too. I mean, they've adopted the technology as well. Right. But it's as simple as for Lyft, you know, they say you don't even have to pay a set fee. That's why they co consider themselves to be different. And somebody just shows up quickly, takes you to where you want to go, and then you make a, a donation. Most people will donate as, as you find in, in <laughs> any of these things. What's, probably 1% of the population is going to get out and they're going to start to run away and realize they don't have to run away. <laughs> <laughs> it's legal for them to stiff these cabbies. Right. So, <laughs> so do you think the commission has a case against Lyft and, you know, any other companies that will come into St. Louis because they are kind of selling themselves as a ride-sharing company um, and, you know, they're not really charging people? So what can they do? I think the commission needs to change its rules. I think the commission needs to, to well, it's, they're never going to admit that their job is to protect existing companies from competition. Nonetheless, they need to adopt their rules to, to realize, and I described this in a blog post at Show Me Daily, that technology has dramatically reduced the need for these taxi cab protections, even if you ever had them, even if you ever needed them. Now think of what somebody who arrives at the airport can do with a phone in a matter of three minutes while waiting for luggage. They can write, review online reviews of cab companies. They can go to sites that estimate cab fares. Those sites exist. They've been there. You want an estimate of what it's going to cost you to go from Lambert to Clayton or, or downtown? You can get that idea. Most importantly, you can map out your route so you know, so you know if the cabbie's taking you on a, on, a bo on a bogus trip. If they right. get on 70 westbound instead of eastbound, <laughs> right. it's pretty obvious with your GPS map that you're going the wrong way. So it's dramatically evened out the information advantage for consumers to compete better and to have the knowledge. So I think these rules for the Metropolitan Taxi Cab Commission are outdated and need to be adjusted, and you need to allow far more competition out there because the consumers are more informed than ever. But now let's take this from the commission's point of view or ask this, this question. So before technology was able to uh, dispatch a, a stranger's car to my work to get me to my next meeting with a pink mustache on the grill. I couldn't start a cab company. I, it would take me, cost me millions of dollars to buy a medallion in New York City. I could never break the regulatory code or figure out how to get 
my cab to and from Lambert to legally pick up people, um, it it was it was sort of a locked business. There was no more. There, you were never going to get more cabs out there. That's one. The other thing is, what about the cab company's argument? They need insurance. They are regulated. Um, gas being what it is, I, these these drivers have to wear you know shirt n- nice shirts and pants and everything else. There's a lot more that is put upon the current cab companies as opposed to these part-time ride sharers. There is a lot more put upon them, and I think most of the things put upon them are unnecessary. You just mentioned the uniform rules. I mean, how ridiculous is that, that we have uniforms for, for cab drivers? I mean, who cares what the cab driver, <laughs> well, what the cab driver is wearing? Okay, and, but, but many of those rules are unnecessary, and many of the ways that they've operated for a long time are designed to restrict competition. You mentioned the airport. It took a lawsuit about 15 years ago where a new some new entrepreneurs were trying to break into the airport and were totally prevented from doing so. They were just completely locked out and actually won a lawsuit and and then it had to be opened up and then they didn't give time for the free market to work itself out so they closed it closed it up again, just not quite as severely as back in the 90s. And this is the type of of a uh, competition and and that leads to corruption. And we've talked about this show about the prior corruption. I'm not accusing the current Metropolitan Taxi Cab Commission of that. But when you empower government agencies, in these cases county officials, I mean, they were taking bribes from, from the taxi cab companies designed to, to limit that, that competition. What about insurance? What about just r- car safety? If some strange man who's unregulated, who I don't know where this guy's been or whatever else. He doesn't have his little picture in his cab license in the front dash. How do I know it's a safe car and it has insurance? God forbid something were to happen. Well, I understand that Lyft and Uber are insured and their riders are insured, and you can you can investigate these companies. It just takes a minute on your phone to say as you as you hook them up. You can go to the, the online reviews. You can go to, you can Google it, a thousand reports will come up about Uber on your on, on your Google search in a second. And you can see that, yes, these companies are, ins- most importantly, are insured. And they do try to hire quality drivers. And look, there's risk in anything. The idea that the Metropolitan Taxi Cab Commission is out there taking away the risk to consumers is crazy. Of course, something wrong can happen. The fact is that the free market works in the overwhelming number of opportunities and the excuse to protect the consumer is just that it's an excuse designed to hide the fact that what they're really trying to do is limit competition for their current membership so control the commission so um (laughs) uber is they're trying to keep uber out but supposedly uber uh, another ride sharing app is coming this this fall is that what you hear i i don't know about the that latest update i know they're trying to come to st louis absolutely right but some rules their concern is really rules that allow them where they can and can't park like they they would try and park up next to a hotel or a business and they're designed by their restrictions to where they can and can't park and they're saying that's what's really inhibiting right. their business model because unlike lyft you do pay them directly i mean they they don't have that sort right. of lyft it's free unless you want to give a donation <laughs> excuse and i'm not kidding lyft here i think it's a legitimate distinction right what about um the uh idea that um, the taxi commission is give they have the power to give a citation to somebody for giving a lift to an airport so could they could the taxi commission cite me for giving a lift to my sister to the airport you know that's a it's a great question i would say i would say no obviously there's a distinction but really what's the distinction between you and a Lyft rider who's right. doing it for a donation. And my sister says, here, you know what? Here's uh, 20 bucks for 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 the uh, gas. Here's 20 bucks for your All of a sudden, you've for committed a crime. You very well might have committed a crime. Right. To take a, to, what's the difference between Lyft and a fr- – maybe there's a thing for family members. <laughs> but now, what if you're just picking up a neighbor that you don't really know that well? And here she gives you gas money. How are you different from a, a Lyft driver other than the mustache? And I did see a, a Lyft car out, out last night walking – Driving around the city, obviously right. not walking. That would be silly. <laughs> Driving around with the pink mustache in Forest Park. You know, you kind of have a pink mustache. I do. I do. You'd Thank be you. a great Lyft driver. <laughs> no. is... I mean, surely though, other cities have uh, have faced resistance from absolutely these companies, and I wonder how they have handled it. And it's not stopping companies like Lyft from expanding. 
Thankfully, yeah, good. Yeah, I mean, I they continue to here. expand, and so I wonder how they're handling it. Well, the, however they're handling it in other cities, and I think it's being – Uber is thriving, Lyft is growing, so yeah. obviously a lot of these companies – I'm sorry, these other cities are adapting – their rules, and I hope that's what Missouri, St. Louis does too. I said Missouri because Kansas City has a similar issue. St. Louis needs to adapt its code to encourage these types of entrepreneur, entrepreneurs, not inhibit them. They need to stop using the rules to limit choice for consumers. That's what they're doing here. They're limiting choices to consumers, many of them for Lyft and Uber, young people who just want to use their phone to get a ride, aren't satisfied with current taxi cab services and want more options and there's really no argument against that you're just flat out restricting competition i think it's awful. and you're putting people to work too you know well people it's, who a, may not, it's a great it's part-time, part-time gig for people it's a great part-time gig mm-hmm. let me ask you this question so uh and i know you're a policy analyst and you're not a marketing guy but i'm going to ask you this this question anyway at some point the taxi commission had to say if we start writing citations to this ride share app people we're going to create a little bit of controversy. Nick Pister is going to write a story. Every joker on the radio is going to be talking about it. It's going to be cause a controversy. In terms of PR, it's a bad move because now they've just given hundreds of thousands of dollars of free press to this app, which nobody would have known about if they just would have kept their trap shut and not write the citations. Well, right, it's lift. Obviously, they threw a party to get going here. <laughs> and, and when, when I heard that the Metropolitan Taxi Commission might visit their party, that was all the all the better. Right. A completely inappropriate move, by the way, in my opinion, for the Taxi Cab Commission to crash a launch party or show up. <laughs> As I've heard happen, correct me if I'm wrong, but r- you are right. I'm not a PR or marketing guy at all, but I would think that, yes, Lyft is clearly benefiting from this type of controversy because it is – it's ridiculous – what they're doing, and it's, I wanted to just keep it to the Metropolitan Taxi Cab Commission and not about the city or county, but I think the city lending them police officers to, for the opening weekend, I think that's also ridiculous. I think that's a so, Back up a second. Back resources. up a second. You're saying that the city lent the Taxi Cab Commission police officers? That's according to Mr. Pister's article in the, in the Post. Because they were, they were using police resources to stop these Lyft riders? Right, to go out and find... The Lyft drivers and incite them and, and issue them the summons. Yeah, hmm. that's bad. That's not good. It's just it's bad PR. It's also you're right. It's stifling competition. That's what it's there for, and that's why that's why I right now I'm so happy with the Metropolitan Taxi Cab Commission <laughs> because there are St. Louisans of all stripes who've never really thought about this issue before now who are thinking and seeing that this is how licensing abuses work and it doesn't just happen with taxis it happens with lots of occupations however if you're in new york city and you just had to pay 1.5 million dollars for a medallion and then somebody can just become a taxi cab overnight you know it's like the food trucks wait a minute i gotta pay um you know i gotta pay this fee and that fee and property taxes and and then occupancy permits and all of a sudden a, a truck can drive up and sell food out of a truck and i was forced to do all this so the taxi driving companies have some issues or have to be protected somehow because they're holding the bag with these medallions and all this other infrastructure costs look technical i think the phrase would be to quote the well-known blogger andrew sullivan it's like ha you're the travel agents now i mean technology is disrupting a lot of existing businesses over this past 15 years with right. the internet. We also, travel agents might have been the first type of business that was severely damaged by the web. And hundreds of other occupations are, it's happening to them now. Restaurants via food trucks and cabs are, are just the latest. But you can't use legislation to, to restrict competition and try and fight back against that technology, in my opinion. So if you're a newspaper and you just invested in a brand new printing press and unfortunately people stopped reading newspapers... That's just bad luck. It's bad luck to the extent that the government shouldn't come in and try and protect you from competition. Abs- ab- to that extent, yes. And that, yeah. I don't mean to sound callous. What's really callous is existing businesses using the power of the law, using the power of government to keep other entrepreneurs out. Really interesting stuff. David Stokes, when can we read you? When can we see you? We have a lot of stuff on licensing abuses and licensing codes at the state and local level at showmeinstitute.org, and you can follow me on Twitter at David C. Stokes. We should say for those who are not watching on TV at stltoday.com and at ktrs.com, you do have a red <laughs> goatee. That's why I said you have a somewhat of a pink mustache. I, 
I I wish it was redder than it is. It's it's too, this is gonna I think well, this is this the, is gonna go away in the next couple of months. I think it's the, I've had this thing for too long. I like to go see. It's time to go. The the red and the the gray equal pink. That's sort of where I got the pink mustache from. I, I I'm gonna run with it. As I said, I need a pink just for men thing for it. <laughs> Eight fifty one, big five fifty KTRS.